I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm just gonna bash your brains in. I'm gonna bash them right the f in. <laughs> Here's Anita. What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering, and she's back. You know, whenever there is uh, a, a politically motivated or a controversy in video games, uh, you can count on uh, Miss Anita to appear from uh, the swamp um, and uh, with dollar signs in her eyes looking at an opportunity to grift some more money off um, nervous game developers. Who could forget uh, her direct threat, in my opinion, uh, to CD Projekt Red, where she said something along the lines of, that's a great video game you got there. Sure would be a shame if something happened to it before demanding a job working for them. Now, look, over the years, I have really come to respect her hustle. I mean, it worked for a while. Uh, she still gets paid to do speaking gigs, which is hilarious because, I mean, it's, what, five years later since the peak of her popularity. And I respect her hustle, but also I'm going to call it out. Now, most of the time, um, you know, she's rattling her saber, so to speak. People don't pay attention. But this particular time, she took to Twitter to spread some hilariously bad lies about a brand new video game out there. Uh, and let's take a look. So IGN and, and really games media in general is always anytime there's a, a you know, modern day video game that comes out with, um, you know, you know, military ties or things of that m matter. They freak out about it. They're like, ooh, but are you saying which? But what are your political messages from saying this? Even though, you know, like uh, back in the day, the left, you know, which is most of the media nowadays and give video games, used to oppose uh, foreign wars. Now they seem to embrace it, almost thirst for it, love it. Um, which is a bizarre juxtaposition, in my opinion. But you see this really long article written um, on the 19th of March, the second battle of Fallujah, which took place in 2004. We all know these people are doing the, the best advertising for the six days in Fallujah video game they could have ever hoped for. So this game was initially announced back in 2009. And uh, Konami ends up ditching the project because uh, it's hashtag too soon, apparently. Um, you know, I don't think that, that such a thing exists. Um, I think, you know, we've seen plenty of movies about this situation uh, in the past 10 years. What's the difference if it's a video game? So IGN spoke with a number of Arab and Iraqi game developers and members of the video game community about the perspectives surrounding the revival of this game. Five agreed to speak on the record. So five people will now craft the entire narrative, as did one U.S. military veteran. What do you want to bet? It's Mr. Megadev, John Phipps, Mr. Willie Peets in the video game. This is a, this is a, this is a triggering. Uh, Many of those we reached out to declined to comment officially for various reasons. For some, it was a very personal topic they found challenging to talk about, while others were concerned that speaking critically about either the U.S. military or real-world events would result in repercussions. Are you joking? Are you joking? I already know the type of people you reached out to, all right? Like, we know. Uh, and you see... You know, it's not political is used primarily, this is from Anita, by content creators who are resistant to call for more representative video game landscape, said Anita, media critic and executive director of Broke Company Feminist Frequency in our initial statement to IGN. Quote, it's a defense most often used to push the most regressive, conservative and oppressive narratives. Really, sister? I mean, really? The recent, I mean, and you can see most of this is is lies. Of course, this in bounding into comics. I need to uh, target six days in Fallujah. Lies about published Victoria. Victoria. Uh, speaking with IGN's Rebecca Valentine, Sarkeesian lied about the game developer Victoria. She described the uh, who is I'm sorry, Sarkeesian, who is described by Valentine as a quote critic, and as a person connected 
to the Fallujah via her family, uh, with parents born and raised there, and other relatives who were working in uh, that city during the battle, told Valentine, quote, it's not political, is used primarily by creators who are reticent to call for a more representative video game landscape. She then adds, it's a defense most often used to push the most regressive, conservative, oppressive narratives. However, Victoria never described their game as, quote, not political. It was Polygon who ran a headline reading, quote, six days in Fallujah, not trying to make a political commentary, uh, creator says. In the actual article, Peter Tamty, the top dog of Victoria, quote, for us as a team, it's really about helping players understand the complexity of urban uh, battles. It's about the experiences of that individual that is now there because of political decisions. Quote, and our right, quote continues, and we do want to and we do want to show how choices that are made by policymakers affect the choices of a Marine uh, need to make on the battlefield. Just as that Marine cannot second guess their choices by policymakers, we are not trying to make a political commentary about whether or not the battle itself was a good or bad idea. Well, look at how about this? It was a terrible idea. Terrible. I know I don't blame those that served, but it was always about oil. It was only ever about oil. George Bush Jr. lied to everyone to get into his his stupid uh, battle. Still waiting for those WMDs, George boy. Later in his discussion, he would state, quote, I don't think players are going to be confused about the costs of, the ba of battle. I don't think that they're going to walk away from the game experience going we need more war i don't think that that's something that the marines and soldiers want as a message i don't think that's something that the civilians want as a message i think people do need to understand the human cost of these decisions following polygon's misleading headline victoria would eventually issue a statement reiterating his original comments found within the article the tweet reads we understand the events recreated in this video game are inseparable from politics the full statement begins. It continues. The stories in six days are told through the gameplay and documentary footage featuring service members and civilians with diverse experience and opinions about the events. So far, 26 civilians and dozens of service members have shared their most difficult moments of their lives with us. So we can share them with you in their words. The documentary segments uh, discuss many tough topics, including the events and political decisions that led to these battles, as well as their aftermath. While we do not allow players to use Willie Pete during gameplay, its use is described during the documentary segments, the statement reads. Seems like a perfectly good way to handle it. It goes on. During the gameplay, players will participate in stories that are given context to the documentary segments. Each mission challenges players to solve real uh, military and civilian scenarios f and uh, from the battle interactively, offering a perspective into urban battles not possible through any other media. It concludes, we believe, see, I'm going to buy this game now. Now, I understand that there's going to be people that, you know, maybe don't want to go back through that or whatever. <laughs> Who can, I mean, obviously, um, heavy losses were sustained there. Extraordinarily heavy losses. Um, but have you ever played Call of Duty? Like, military dudes love that game. Uh, I don't think uh, that there's going to be any kind of real backlash here that isn't fabricated. Um, it concludes, we believe the stories of this generation's sacrifice deserve to be told by the Marine soldiers and civilians who were there. We trust you will find this game like the events it recreates to be complex. Sarkeesian would react to this statement by telling IGN the recent statement from Victoria. Uh, articulating that they understand that Six Days is in fact a political game is nothing more than crisis management, whether they actually understand the problems or not. She continues, It doesn't change that the developers who worked on the game for many years worked on it while believing they were not making a political game. So essentially, um, oh, okay, so you acknowledge what we wanted you to acknowledge. Not enough! You didn't hire me. You didn't bring me in as a... As a um, uh, sensitivity consultant and pay me $50,000. So now I'm going to try to torpedo your game. Obviously, we know this won't work. Not only did Sarkeesian lie about his comments about the game not being political, but she also revealed she has an axe to grind and is using it 
against the game to push her own political agenda. She's attacking the game, saying it doesn't change the fact that the game is perpetually are perpetuating the status quo of American imperialism and incredible harm that it causes to the rest of the world, and in this case to Iraqis and Arabs more broadly. She went on to comment that the game's marketing, the developer statements very carefully acknowledge that you know the bad things happen, but they aren't providing any context. Do you, I mean, is every movie about this, do you do that about every TV show that re references the kind of stuff? It's ridiculous. She also said it's extremely well documented at this point that Arabs and American media have overwhelmingly been portrayed as unhinged bad people who hate freedom and democracy. Um, again, no evidence provided. Now, certainly there are certain tropes there that uh, you know could probably use more context. But the idea that she is coming at this in uh, any kind of a good faith type decision is hilarious. Uh, she continued... Talk about building empathy. Where are the stories about Arabs living in their lives, loving sports, mastering a musical instrument, falling in love, finding comfort in their religious or spiritual faith? Listen, Anita, why don't you make this video game? I mean, right? Isn't this from the same people of build your own country, uh, you know, build your own social media? Why don't you make your own video game sh showing, um, you know, a young Arab learning how to play the piano? Wouldn't that be a bestseller? I'm sure it would be. Where are the stories? Create them. This is something that, like, you know, from the do-nothing critics out there, if you're wondering why something doesn't exist, why don't you work to create it or support people that are? This is just a video game. That's all it'll ever be. But the more controversy these fools kick up over it, the more copies of the game that are going to sell. It's a tale as old as time. I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you again real soon.